Ketha Rawal and I am a 120 under 40 winner. My name is Paul Nyachai. Vicky Boydow. I am Marvin Masalunga. Margaret Bolaji. Kasat Abraham Admasu. Dr. Laling Mufuking. Purju Boskurt. Ryan Mtevi. I'm excited to be the winner of 2016 120 under 40 campaign. 120 under 40 came out of a concern, I think, across the family planning field that there wasn't the critical mass of young people coming up who would succeed some of the more established leaders in the field. Oying Ramona, director, came up with the project as a way to both highlight the young people who are active in the field and also encourage the continued growth and development of young people who are working on family planning and reproductive health all over the world. So 120 under 40 is a way of identifying celebrating, recognizing, and attracting this new generation of potential leaders who are passionate about this particular issue. So we take nominations from anyone who knows your work and can vouch for what you've done. You just can't nominate yourself. We'll do three rounds of the project and at the end of those three rounds, we'll have 120 young leaders under 40. That aligns with the goal year for the Family Planning 2020 movement, which aims to enable 120 million additional women and girls to access voluntary contraception. And so this project is part of the global movement towards that goal and also will, through the individual kind of attention and support we're giving our winners, will contribute to that forward momentum. All of our winners also get a $1,000 grant to continue in their work. And at least one of our winners this year bought a new laptop with his grant and is working on a new website for his organization. The winners were chosen through a combination of public voting, a jury review, and then the project secretariat went through the results and put together the final list of winners. I'm also a chair of the jury selection. So I've seen all the candidates and I've seen who won, but I was particularly impressed because every single one of them has just this unique, very powerful story to tell. So of the 40 winners uh, in this first batch that were selected, we invited about 10 of them to the U.S. When they came here, they were already leaders in the field, whether they knew it or not. And one thing we really wanted them to get out of their experience here in September was a kind of enhanced toolkit of skills that they could take back and put to work in their work. We hosted them for a leadership principles workshop and then a storytelling workshop in which they learned how to tell their own personal stories under the umbrella of the larger issues in, in which they work. It was really important to us to give them a real physical platform from which to speak. So each evening we had an evening reception and at all of those receptions some of the winners were given a platform to talk about their own personal stories and involvement and, and why they care so much about the work they do. These winners brought with them such powerful personal stories of why they are in family planning, why they care about these issues. And as they move uh, and told their story from Baltimore to New York and Washington, D.C., they became even more effective in delivering those powerful stories. I started to work in family planning when I joined the Ministry of Health as an expert. I have seen millions of Ethiopian women particularly rural women who have the opportunity to get family planning services of their choice because of the programs we have designed and rolled out. My personal experiences under sexual and reproductive health and rights made me passionate about this work. When I was an adolescent age, talking about these topics is just not allowed before marriage. During my student days, I actually misadvised one of the clients and she actually ended up getting pregnant. And I, I really felt I've really done 
a disservice to the client. So during my studies, I was really committed to getting to know so that I don't repeat my mistake. At the same time, I do come from a family of seven siblings. So we've actually seen the joys and the pains of being many in our, in our family. I grew up in a community where there are myths about family planning. People held views that family planning causes disability in children. And I thought these are views that are not right. We need to demystify, we need to challenge. And when I became a writer, I thought I could use a pen to be that change in my community and my country. You could see the passion in the words and the eyes and the way these winners speak. You know? And you can't replace that with anything else. When people believe in something, you can achieve beyond what you have imagined. One Time Under 40 will bring more attention to the young winners, but also to the nominees. Of course, we can only choose 120 winners because of the way the project's set up, but all of the nominees that we received were remarkable and were accomplished and were contributing to the forward movement of the field. 120 Under 40 also provides a platform for these young people that helps them to get their name out there and their work out there a little bit more than maybe they are able to do themselves. We would like to see them network among themselves, learn from each other, and bring new ideas into the future and replace people like me you know, in terms of charting what the course is into the future. What's great about this project is that it lets people know that they're being seen and being heard and they don't always know that. I'm humbled that really there's a lot of people out there that actually recognize the work that I'm doing so I really feel encouraged to continue the work, to really put my best in helping the women and children of Kenya. It meant to me that I'm on the right track and it gives me courage and strength to work towards reaching out to other young people from rural areas where there's a taboo around sex and sexuality and sexual and reproductive health and keep on educating them and empowering them so that they can advocate for their own sexual and reproductive health and rights. It's fantastic to be a winner. It shows that the work we're doing for girls and women for family planning and reproductive health is the right thing to do. The 120 and the 40 award is, is gonna benefit the work that I'm undertaking by, I think, putting me in touch with a strong, smart, and motivated group of people that can help drive forward and make sure that family planning stays on top of the agenda and make sure that it's responsive. There are young people all over the world who have this common ground. So I think it's really interesting to see the way that young people are adapting the, the field to what they need and trying to make it speak to them and to their peers. And I think we have a really good moment here now in the international arena to make some real change for women and girls all over the world. What we have done in the last three years is revitalize the global agenda for family planning so that it is sexy enough, important enough that the young people start to engage so that then we recruit the best and the brightest to work in this field and they will become the leaders, you know, who would shape it into the future. I always tell young new leaders, brilliance is not enough. Hard work, you might think is enough, but it's not enough. You bring together brilliance and hard work, in my book, it's still not enough. I encourage this new generation to do good. And if you do good, the good will come back to yourself and to your community. That to me is the key, and that's about the heart. <laughs>